never breaks the law, you gon' get this work. Work. Judah. Work. work. At this work. time, we were like, work. Work. all the gay sayers and they sayers of Israel work. united in Christ. Work. Work. Take this moment, work. please, to work. shut work. up. <laughs> work. All right, work. we're going in. Fix your face. face. We ain't going nowhere. nowhere. Strips popping ain't no stopping. When I'm on post, so don't go there. go there. Gotta get it if you wanna know that. Know that. French stuff, and I'ma show that. Know that. Mad at me, cause it's Bible verse? Boy, we ain't wrote that. We're gonna tell you what God says to do. We're gonna give it to you. And yes, we're gonna make you accountable for that. And we don't care how you feel about it. The Bible says whether they hear or not, they gonna know what the Bible says amongst them. Be them boys in that purple uh, Geeking in them scriptures, man You can call me Urkel Christ is coming with them chairs Like a circle With flames of fire on those who don't follow Instruction uh, Repent or die What we're going to do is We're going to go over some scriptures today Today's class is entitled Life and Death Life and Death In uh, understanding this there's, there's certain things, like I said, certain aspects that you're never going to deal with in church. I'm going to tell you all, so-called church, because we the church, the people's the church. But in the world, for you all that's new, today's topic is something that they're not able to teach or go into, simply because the Most High God didn't give them the understanding. When you keep God's commandments and faith in his son, he gives you the understanding to where you're able to understand what's going on. You're able to understand what life is about. Matter of fact, real quick, uh, brothers, give me a scripture that tells you what what is the key to life. What's the reason for life? LK9. Microphone. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Somebody read that real quick. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Come on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Read. Fear God and keep his commandments. Come on. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. Uh, Officer Gabar, you have another scripture, sir? Get that. Sirach 19 and verse 19. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19 and verse 19. Come on. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. The doctrine of life. So we explain what it is that we're going through or what it is that we need with the Bible. We don't speak any other type of way. Give me a uh, real quick Romans 15 and 4. Y'all know how I like to start my classes. Romans 15 and 4. This is the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Come on. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You have to, you brothers and sisters, you have the understanding, right? So you have to be able, like the scripture says, comfort in the scriptures. You got to be able to comfort your brother and your sister who's going through something. A lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll, we think that our words, you know, saying us saying something nice is what's going to comfort them. But to a believing brother or sister, you know what's going to comfort them? When you bring those scriptures back to remembrance that they may not be thinking about right now because their mind is clouded because of the situation, because of their loved one being lost, or because of what they're going through themselves. There's people that find out in this truth, they're diagnosed with a terminal illness. Now, how are you gonna comfort that person? How are you gonna make that person understand that look, you understand where you're going. If, if this terminal illness, if it be the Lord's will that it's gonna take you, you understand where you're gonna go. A lot of times our minds get clouded. Basically what happened was John the Baptist, who was fervent since the day he was born. Remember, he's the one that heard the tidings in the womb of his mother's uh, stomach and heard the tidings of Jesus Christ and he leapt in the womb. And he was preaching from the day that he was born about the coming of the Messiah. He knew. He knew. 
Well, guess what? He was faced with death. He was placed in jail, and he knew where his time had come. And what did he do? He began to wonder, are you the Christ? He asked, he sent men to Christ to ask him, are you the Messiah? And Christ sent word back to him. He said, the, uh, the sick are being healed, the dead are being risen. All that is being, uh, was written is being fulfilled, brother. Rest easy. Basically, that's what he was telling John. Then it comforted John's spirit. So let's get started real quick. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Give me Genesis, the second chapter. Pray you all take good notes today. Genesis, the second chapter. And let's start at verse 7. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. This is where all man came from. Read. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh -huh. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. Give me Genesis, the third chapter. We're going to start at verse 17. So a lot transpires between Genesis um, 2 and Genesis 3. Basically, which we'll go over this at a later date as well, but the fall of man is taking place. The Most High God has specifically told uh, Adam and Eve not to deal with a certain spirit, right? Well, because of rebelliousness, Eve was hard-headed. She stepped out. She didn't listen to her husband. She stepped out and went and listened to another man, and that doctrine was passed to her. She took it back to her husband. Well, guess what happened now? Genesis 3, 17. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Come on. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, uh -huh. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. He said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, because you didn't listen, because you didn't do what you was told. He said, Cursed is the ground for your sake, because of you. Read. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Now, I know this might sound like, oh, well, that's not bad. He's just going to. No, you don't understand. Adam had it made to where he didn't have to do nothing but wake up in the morning and go eat. Mm. Him and his wife. Come on. Thorns also and thistles shall, thou, shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. I'll read on. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. This is actually going into the condition. God made it hard for man. Come on. Till thou return unto the ground. Until what? Till thou return unto the ground. He said he's going to make it hard until you return to the ground where you came from, right? For out of it wast thou taken. For, for, for dust thou art, and into dust shalt thou return. Stop. What did... What was now decreed in the earth from this point? Death. Death. Man was not supposed to die. When actually you read on it, you understand the way that our bodies were made up. You notice that the Most High dec decreed death at this point, but it took a while for those bodies to actually wear down, meaning there was people who lived 900 years, then it started trickling down 600, 800 years, whatever the case may be. But guess what? Death was now decreed. That's now whenever everything was made difficult. It was not just given to us. Give me second Ezra 7. It wasn't just given to us. Ezra actually touches on some of this. Well, the angel touched on this with Ezra whenever Ezra was, was speaking with the angel. Who was it? Was it Raphael or Uriel? Which angel? Uriel. Uriel. Get that real quick. Give me second Ezra the seventh chapter. We had it made in the beginning, y'all. We had it made. The kingdom was ours. It was given to us. But because of sin, the Most High God changed up the circumstances to receive it. You got that? No, start at verse 1. Some of us haven't been through this yet. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 1. Come on. And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the nights afore. Read. And he said unto me, Up Ezra. And hear the words that I have come to tell thee. And I said, speak on, my God. Then said he unto me. Stop. Why did Ezra call the angel my God? Daniel, uh, Michaela. Why did Ezra speak to the angel and say, my God? Because it was the most high coming through that angel, bringing him the message. 
Right. You'll notice whenever the when they speak to whenever they speak to an angel, they know the angel is a what? Messenger, right? So everything that you say to the angel, where does it go? To the most high. So the angel is just like the stand-in talking to you, and it's God's words, right? So that's why he says, My God. It's it's not a, a it's not like he's worshiping the angel or whatever the case may be, okay? Go ahead. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place, uh -huh. that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. So he says, the sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. So in order, basically the sea was huge. Think of the ocean, right? But in order to get into that ocean, you got to go through this narrow river. Read. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, uh -huh. how could he come unto the broad? So the angel is giving him a, a similitude, an analogy. He said, listen, in order for them to come and look upon this sea, how are they going to be able to get there? They have to go through the narrow river in order to get to the sea. Come on. There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field. So he says, here's another similitude. Here's another analogy. There is a city built, and it's set in a broad, vast field. Read. And it's full of all good things. Full of all good things. If you think of anything that's in a city that be filled with good things, that's it. Right? That city is nice. It's decked. You're talking about walls made of right. gold, right? It's no stench, no smells. You ain't talking about New York City. This is mm. talking about the kingdom right here, right? Come on. The entrance thereof is narrow. But to and, get to the city, there's a narrow entrance leading there, read. And it's set in a dangerous place to fall. And it's set in a dangerous place. So see this beautiful city, but in order to get to that city, there's a very narrow, dangerous path you got to walk. Come on. Like as if, if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. So think about it. On the, on the right hand, you got fire. What happens if you fall into that fire? You're going to burn up. You're going to die, right? There's water on the other side, on the left. What happens if you fall in the water? You drown. Yes, we are all black in here. So we, <laughs> folks ain't really that good of swimmers, all right? But that's the, the similitude. On the left, you drown. On the right, you burn. Stay on the path so you stay alive. Come on. And, only, and one only path between them both. Uh -huh. So basically, there's no other way. There's no way to get to that, that kingdom Unless you walk that path, read. Even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Y'all see how this similitude is going? It's actually leading you up to understanding this walk in life. Because you can't walk next to anybody. You can't bring anybody with you. Only Everybody has to walk their own path. Now, yeah, we're following one another. But I can't reach back and help you. You can't reach up and help me. You got to stay balanced on your own. You got to walk at your own. Like the scripture says, though Daniel and Noah were in it, they but should only what? Deliver their own selves. So you can't, you can't save your children. You can't save your wife. You can't save your, uh, your granny, your friends. It has to be you. Okay? Read on. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance. So if someone said, hey, listen, that's your city. Okay? Which, this is no secret. This is describing the kingdom of heaven. Right. God said, listen, Israel, that city belongs to you. That's your city. That's what's been passed down to you. You can have it, right? Read on. If he never shall pass the danger set before it, uh -huh. how shall he receive this city? He says, listen, you want it? You got to go get it, though. How shall you inherit that city if you do not walk that dangerous path? Y'all know what that dangerous path is? Life. Life is that dangerous path. We've all been placed in it. Everybody that's living and breathing has been, you have taken on the toll of having to either walk that path or fall off the side. Fall in the fire or fall in the water. Come on. And I said, it is so, Lord. Tell them what verse you at. Verse 10. And I said, it is so, Lord. Read. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. He said, even so also, this is Israel's portion. This is the plight set ahead of the children of Israel. This is what you must do. You got to walk that narrow path to inherit that city. Come on. Because for their sakes, I made the world. Because of what? 
their sakes I made the world. God made the world for you. I don't know about you. You're supposed to be feeling real right. special right now. You ever have somebody give you a gift? You're like, oh, this is so nice. God made the whole earth for you. What That's can somebody right. give you better than that? Right. He said he made the whole world for you. Come on. And when Adam transgressed my statutes. It says, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, my laws, read. Then was decreed that now is done. Then was decreed now that now is done, meaning what? Now you got to walk that narrow path. When Adam messed up, before we had it. But when Adam messed up, right. we all now were decreed that narrow path to walk in order to inherit the kingdom. Read. Verse 12. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow. Full and of what? Sorrow. Full of sorrow. Come on. And travail. And travail. Read. There are but few and evil. Come on. Full of perils and very painful. It says, then were the entrances of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. This is why we experience the things that we experience in life. Because like the scripture just said, the entrances were made this way when Adam fell. So it's not going to be easy. There's danger on the right and on the left. There, I want y'all to look at it like this. Some of y'all play video games, right? Some of you sisters play video games. Okay, it's cool, whatever. The, the, the video game uh, creators, they go through and they think about, okay, let's make this level. Then to make do this, you got to go through that. You got to jump over this. You got to jump over that. All this stuff has to happen to this person. And if he's able to dodge, duck, and move through all this, then he beats the game at the end, right? Okay, it's the same way. When Adam messed up, all of these things now were put in front of us. The walk to the march to the kingdom ain't just so simple as, oh, I'm an Israelite. Let's go. All right. You're just going to walk and everything's going to be fine. No. Things are going to happen. There's going to be things come at you from the left and the right. We all have different trials in our faith. We've all been dealt a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us may look at each other like, man, shoot, you got it easy. Brother, you got it easy. But I'm going to tell you right now, that ain't the way he feel. You know, little snobby, rich white kids in Beverly Hills, they got problems. Y'all know that? I'm serious. They got issues. They really think like, damn, life sucks. He got eight bedrooms and three he's never seen in his life. And he's talking about he got problems. <laughs> he, ain't never, he ain't never ate nothing microwaved. <laughs> Everything is, is cooked straight off the, the grill for him. And he think he got problems. But if you ask him, oh, man, life is a struggle. Oh, my God, my dad didn't buy me my Bentley I wanted. I wanted the, the, the 2019 Bentley. Well, son, it hasn't come out yet. Well, I want it. <laughs> That's his issue? Those are your problems? Yes. In his mind, it's a big deal. So a lot of times I don't like to minimize, which I do, but I don't like to minimize your issue or your problem because it is your trial. It is what you're dealing with. So we all, in the same way, have to walk that self, that, uh, that same uh, path for ourselves. Okay? So it may not be that you're experiencing what this brother's experiencing, but in this brother's life, it's just as bad. Okay? So don't ever feel like, man, my life sucks, it's hard, it's rough. No, somebody else is going through it too. We all in this thing together. Read that one more time. Verse 12. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, mm -hmm. full of sorrow and travail. Read. They are but few and evil. They are but few and evil. You ever wonder like, dang, why is all this stuff happening? What is going on? You don't understand. All these things is coming at you. And the most I don't put nothing, but you're gonna, we're going to touch on that. But the most I don't put nothing in front of you that you can't deal with. Now, the question is, where are you at in your walk? You're going to trip and fall down and lay down on the path for a while. Here it is. You've got miles and miles to walk. And now you upset and mad, so you're just going to sit down and pout. You're going to lay down for a while. I'm tired of this. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back. Or you start walking backwards, you're going back into the world. Is that, how, is that going to fix anything? Is that going to get you the kingdom? No, you got to keep pressing forward. We all have that path to walk. Get back on your feet. Knock the dust off your shoulders. Get it off your boots and keep trucking. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. Read that one more time. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow, 
full of sorrow and travail. There are but few and evil. Come on. Full of perils and very painful. Y'all know what perils is? It's problems. This life, you're going to have a bunch of problems and situations that happens to you, right? For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure. It was given to us. And that day when in Edom, when, uh, when Adam and Eve was there, psh, it was popping. It was lovely. But they messed it up. Come on. And brought immortal fruit. Read. If then that they live labor not to enter these straight and vain it, things. It says, if then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things. Why does he call it straight and vain? Straight and vain things. If the people alive don't basically deal with all these problems, these situations that's coming at them, what is it? What was your life? You just gave up. You ever notice, y'all ever seen somebody, and I'm talking about in the world, where somebody's literally fighting them, and they don't fight back? They getting punched in the face, you looking at them like, dude, duck, throw a punch. And they just like, no, no, I ain't fighting. I'm just going to lay down. Bro, what's wrong with you? In the truth, you ain't even fighting. You ain't even kicking. You just laying down, falling victim to sin. Something horrible happens to you. You just give up. Oh, man, I can't deal with this. No. Nah. You, if you a fighter, you get back up on your feet. You keep fighting. Read on. They can never receive those that are laid up for them. If you don't fight, you'll never receive those things that's laid up for you. If you don't keep going down that path, you will never receive that city. You're going to sit down there and pout and lay down with your face in the ground while everybody else is stepping over you like, Psh, whatever, I'm going to get I'm, I'm gonna get there. And all you got to do is just get up and just walk and keep going. Don't let anything stop you, whether it be your family, whether it be your friends, whether it be offenses that happen in the truth, whether it be whatever sin it is that you're trying to get in or get over, do not let it stop you. Because I'm going to tell you, life is short. And we're finding this out. Life is short. You don't know when your, your, time, your time will be cut. You don't know when the Lord is going to call you. So make sure that you're laboring and you're doing exactly what you need to do because you know if you walk that path until the day you die, what happens? You get the kingdom, all right? All right, yes, drop sir. that. Give me Sirach 11. I want Ecclesiasticus, the 11th chapter, and the 14th verse. Understanding life and death. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 and verse 14. Come on. Prosperity and adversity. Prosperity, meaning you prospering. You getting it. You out there, man. Everything is lovely. Everything is beautiful, right? Prosperity and what? Adversity. Troubles. Hard times. Things coming against you. Problems. Prosperity and adversity. Life and death. Life and death. Come on. Poverty and riches. Poverty and riches, read. Come of the Lord. All these things come from the Lord. Y'all understand that this, give me Deuteronomy 32 and 39. You, you thinking that, um, oh man, everything's good and gravy, man. All praises, man, I'm getting it. I'm doing right. All praises to the most high. Then whenever you fall, you start questioning God. Well, what happened to all praises to the most right. high? <laughs> Why not, when you fall, give God all praises and honor and glory? Because guess what? Yeah, I'm down here, but you know what? Psh, I'm still trucking. That's I'm still mean. moving. I'm still keeping these commandments to the best of my ability. Give honor. Give praise. Before you get that, let's get, get Job real quick. Get Job. The book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, Read. and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Read on. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, mm -hmm. 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses Read. and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east Come on. and his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day 
and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. So y'all understand what these men were doing? What was they doing, Aziel? Celebrating their birthdays? They were celebrating their birthdays. Do you read of celebrations of, of birthdays and things of that nature in the Bible that the Israelites did? Mm. No. We had no partake in that. Only th when you read about birthdays in the Bible, you know what happens every time? Somebody dies. <laughs> Herod ce celebrated his birthday. What happened? S wh who died? John the Baptist. You read about um, during the time of the Maccabees. Remember when they had that succession with Ivy? What were they doing? They were celebrating the, the king's birth. And they was killing folks. Birthdays is not a custom of ours. We have nothing to do with that. Verse okay. 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking, and walking up and down in it. Walking up and down in it. Meaning what? Satan is back and forth, causing mischief. He actually, if you, are, if you really understand Satan's job, Satan was created to do exactly what he's doing. Okay? So he's going up and down, to and fro, Causing this mischief, trying to jump on men, get them to do wrong, get them to fall off to the left or the right. That's his job. Read on. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? The Lord said, Did you consider my servant Job? Did you, did you consider trying to get him to fall off or to, you know, get him to mess up? Read. That there is none like him in the earth. Come on. A perfect and upright man. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. He eschews evil, meaning what? Ah, get the heck out of here. I ain't dealing with that. Come on. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doeth Job fear God for not? Uh -huh. Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. He said, listen, if you take all that away from him, everything he has, his, uh, his, his house, his, uh, uh, his possessions, the animals, his children. He said, you do that, he'll curse you to your face. Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Everything that you, he has, you can, all right, it's in your power to do so what you want. Read. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. Uh -huh. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Read. And there was a day so when... So he told him, you can't touch him. Right? Read on. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking were wine. Were they keeping the commandments? Mm. Nope. So they didn't have that pr protection. And, only, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And, only, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. So I'm going to tell you all this. I don't want to write a bug out for right now. When you understand the book of Job, Job is one huge allegory, okay, of Israel. When you understand the book of Job, you'll see the plight of Israel, okay? But read on. Verse 19, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Come on. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped, worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What did he say? Blessed be the name of the Lord. You realize he blessed the Lord. He said, blessed be the name of the Most High God. He gave it to me and he can take it away if he mm. chooses. We sit up here and we, act, we always yeah, say, right. all praises, all praises. Most High gave me this, he gave me that. Then when he takes it away, dah, dah, dah. oh, you crying and upset? No, all praises. It's something else that must be done. There's something else that must be going on. 
So I'm going to take it with all that I have because I know all this stuff in front of me right now, it's all burnable. <laughs> all this stuff is going to rot away. The moth's going to eat it up. Right. Read on. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Nor charged God foolishly. Again, a lot of times when we go through things, we begin to question God. That's, that's when you know Satan got you. You was the right one. You was the right one. Satan got you because now you're questioning God. Now you're questioning his, his judgment. Read on. Chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Come on. So the, doing what he does, causing his mischief. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, mm -hmm. one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity. He does what? Holdeth fast his integrity. All that he's been through, he lost it all. He still holds fast his integrity. You know what integrity is? What is integrity? Elkanah. Is, is doing the right thing behind closed doors when you by yourself. Exactly. Meaning, this is really who you are. It's not fake. It's not phony. You are who you are, and you have a certain... It's almost like you, you, you uphold yourself to a certain standard because you're true to yourself and you're true to the Most High. Read on. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. He said, I want y'all to pay attention to what he's saying. He says... And still he holdeth fast his, fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Did Job do anything? No. But because of what? The situation when the Most High seen this man was strong, he went through things. He seen that this man, look, he told Satan, look here, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? Have you tried him yet? Nah, you ain't moving him. That's what Satan was like. Nah, he, psh, you gave him everything. That's why he's so strong. Take it away. Watch him curse you. Took it away. And what did Job do? He blessed the Most High. All right. Read on. Verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Come on. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. He'll curse you to your face. He said, listen, you know what? Put your, put, put your hands on him, hurt him, give him a disease, give him something like that, then he'll, he'll truly curse you. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. You can't kill him. All right, you think he'll do that? Go ahead. But you can't put him to death. Read. So went forth, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. He put boils on him from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head, read. Right? And he took him a pot sheared to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Come on. Then said his wife unto him, Doest thou still retain thy integrity? Sitting upon the ashes is talking about this man was mourning. Even whenever he shaved his head, you read about our ancestors, they pluck out their hairs and do things like that when they were in a, a, a big, like a huge state of mourning and, you know, regret and hurt, pain, read. Then said his wife unto him. Then here comes his rib, his, his help beat. <laughs> Doest thou still retain thine integrity? Uh Come on. Curse God and die. She said, you still retain your integrity? You still basically, you still believe it in this stuff? Curse God and just die. Look how he did you. Mm. Come on. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. You do what? Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. He said, you talking like a dang demon. Mm. You speaking like one of these women that ain't got no understanding. That's why sisters that's in this truth. You got to make sure, especially you seasoned sisters, you sisters that are vets, you got to make sure that you ain't speaking like one of the foolish women. You have a weak moment where you ain't thinking, thus say of the Lord. You're thinking, thus say my emotions, how I'm feeling. Uh, you don't understand. No, I understand what God said. And that's what you need to be uh, giving me whenever I'm feeling low. You got to be able to give that to me to where I'm strong. Come on. What? 
Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Read that again. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? He says what? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Come on. And shall we not receive evil? And shall we not receive evil as well? We receive good things in our life. Are we not going to have bad times? Is bad things not going to happen? Come on. In all this did not Job sin Job with his lips. Job did not sin not one time with his lips. He says, listen, we receive good things from God in this life. Guess what? We're going to receive bad things from God in this life. All we're going to take with cheer. Mm. We're going to take it cheerfully. Now watch this. Go up to the 42nd chapter. And I want you to read verse 10. 42 and verse 10. This is the book of Job, chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Uh -huh. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. Read on. And they bemoaned him and comforted him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. And every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels. Come on. And a thousand uh, yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. Read on. He had also seven sons and three daughters. He had another seven sons and three daughters. Read. And he called the name of the first ja, uh, Jamima. Jamima and the name of the second Keziah. Uh -huh. And the name of the third, Kerhihaf, <laughs> in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. There was, in all the land, Job had the most beautifulest daughters. The Most High blessed him with beautiful daughters, a beautiful family, his land back. He gave him more than what he had before, read. And, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Come on. After this, Job... After this lived Job in 140 years. He lived 140 lived years. The Most High blessed him with a longer life. Come on. And saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. Even four generations. He saw his sons' sons' sons. Read. So Job died, being old and, a full, and full of days. Being old and full of days. Mm -hmm. The story of Job is a testament to keeping God's commandments even through hard and, and, and terrible times. You don't lose faith, even whenever good things happen to you. Bad things happen to you. It don't go the way that you want it to go. Well, listen, at the end of the day, take it all with cheer. Even when you lose somebody, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all something. When you really understand it, whether it be you lose your child, whether you lose your father, you lose your spouse, whatever it may be, who did that person belong to? The most high. I know my mothers is hard and you lose your child. It's like, that was my baby. That was my baby. But in all actuality, that child belongs to the most high. You were just the vessel used to bring that spirit into the earth. So everything goes back to the most high. Everything belongs to him. From there, give me Sirach 14. You know what? Give me Deuteronomy 32 and 39, what I asked for initially. And then let's get Sirach 14. And uh, we'll start at verse 11 in Sarai. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 39. Come on. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Uh -huh. I kill and I make alive. The most high God is the one that kills. And remember I says life and death, all this is from the Lord. Poster prosperity, adversity, poverty, riches, life and death, all come from God. God Gives you, he says, I heal, I kill, I make alive. Read. I wound. I wound. Read. And, and I heal. Come on. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Ain't no, listen, there's nobody that can save you from the Lord. So what should your mind state be? Give me Sirach 11. I'm sorry, not 11, 14 and verse 11. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 14 and verse 11. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. You understand that the Most High God says, I kill, I heal, I make alive, I wound. So you should do what? 
Give the Lord his due offering. Give the Lord his due offering, which is what? Your reasonable service. Keep his commandments. That's the, we read earlier, the duty of man. Your mind frame is, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to do what he said to do. Read. Remember that death will not be long in coming. Do what? Remember that death will not be long in coming. Remember that death will not be long in coming. Death is, you're going to die. Everybody in this room, is unless Christ come back, you're going to see death. So your mind state should be, let me make sure that I'm right with God. Mm. Everything else you're talking about, you want to, you know, make everything right here on earth. Yeah, I understand that. But your first priority is making sure your spirit is right with the most high God. So when he calls you, guess what? You're ready. Come on. And that the covenant of the grave is not showed unto thee. What is the covenant of the grave? What is the, the covenant of the grave? Ashar. The time when you die. Okay, something else. Covenant of the grave. We we read it. I don't know if y'all are thinking along those lines. Uh, Yehuda. In Genesis, when the Most High said, "To the dust you will return." That's when what was decreed was brought forth. We are all going to pass. Read that again from the top. Remember that death will not be long in coming. And that the covenant of the grave is not showed unto thee. Come on. Do good unto thy friend before thou die. Do good unto thy friend before thou die. So now you got yourself right with the Lord. Make sure you do good unto your friend before you leave this earth. Come on. And according to thy ability, stretch out thy hand and give to him. Make sure your demeanor is that of a person that's trying to help others. That should be who you are. That should be in you to want to help your brother, help your neighbor, help your sister, help your brother. Come on. Defraud not thyself of the good day. Read. And let not the part of a good desire overpass thee. And let not the part of a good desire overpass thee. Make sure that you set up treasures that are in heaven so whenever you pass, when you die, you receive them. Come on. Shalt thou not leave thy travails unto another? Shall you not leave your travails unto another, meaning what? What are the, your travails you're going to leave unto someone else? Okay, now. Nah. Your possessions. Your possessions, your problems, all that was yours, you leave to someone else when you pass away. Come on. And thy labors to, de to be divided by lot. And your labors to be divided by lot, meaning all that you've worked for, guess what? It's going to be divided and split up. By your family, your sons, your son gets this, the son gets that, your daughter gets this, whatever the case may be. Come on. Give and take and sanctify thy soul, for there is no seeking of dainties in the grave. Listen, make sure you sanctify your soul because guess what? In the grave, ain't no dainties. <laughs> ain't nothing in there, ain't nothing sweet in there for you. You make sure you get right with God. That's all that matters. You talking about you going to take your, you want to take your car with right. you? <laughs> nah. You going to take your house with you? Nah. Come on. All flesh waxeth old as a garment. Read. For the covenant from the beginning is, thou shalt die the death. That's the covenant, that you will die the death. Come on. As of the green leaves on a thick tree, some fall and some grow. Read. So is the generation of flesh and blood. One cometh to, the, to an end and another is born. Like you see on a tree. Here it is, you have a, a leaf that's just sprouting and it's starting to grow in, right? And then you have a leaf that's on the same branch somewhere that's beginning to wither and fall off. That's life and death. That is the cycle of life. Come on. Every work rotteth and consumeth away, and the worker therefore shall go withal. Come on. Blessed is the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom. Blessed is the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom. In wisdom. His understanding is set on the most high God. The scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Come on. And that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. He what? Reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. That's his understanding. He, know, he got his heart set on holy things. He got his heart set on the kingdom of heaven. Read. He that considereth her ways in his heart shall also have understanding in her secrets. Come on. Go after her as one that traceth and lie in wait in her ways. He that uh, prieth at her, he that prieth in at her windows 
also shall also hearken at her door. It's talking about wisdom. Imagine wisdom as being a woman and she's inside of a house and you're always waiting on her, trying to be around her. You're stalking her. You're looking in the windows. You're lying at the doors. You're trying your best to be close and nigh unto her. That's how you're supposed to be. Some of y'all was doing that with your wives before you got them. That's how you're supposed to chase uh, wisdom. Come on. He that doeth lies near her house Y'all trying to front, uh-huh. Like, no, no. I wouldn't me. I wasn't calling. Shoot, I was calling. <laughs> Go ahead. He that doeth lies. Listen, my wife thought we was friends for the longest. She still thinks it's today. Would you, I just, we were friends first. I wasn't your friend. What you mean? I was patient. Wow, what happened? Dang, man, that's for messed real? up. Hey, I, I'm here for you, though. I'm here. <laughs> Read on. He that doeth lodge near her, verse 24, he that doeth lodge near her house shall also fasten a pin in her walls. Come on, make his place there. Come on. He shall pitch his tent nigh unto her and shall lodge in a lodging where good things are. Read. He shall set his children under her shelter and shall lodge under her branches. He brings his children under her shelter, meaning what? He, this, is, this wisdom is good for him. Guess what? It's so good that it's good for his children. He brings his children there like you brought your kids through the dough. That's, that's his understanding. Let me bring my children. Let me bring my family close unto her so that they live as well. Come on. By her shall he shall be covered from heat, and in her glory shall he dwell. In her glory he shall dwell, meaning what? Covered, protected from heat. Protected from what? Death. Not so much death, meaning dying, but that second death. Give me Sirach 41. Sirach 41 and 1. Dying is a part of life, and death does not discriminate. That's something that we all have to understand. You got that? Sirach 41 and 1? Ecclesiastes chapter 41 and verse 1. Read. Oh, death, how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possession. It says, oh, death, how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his possessions. He's, he's gone. So what, what bitter is it? Y'all ever noticed that a lot of people fear death because of simply just being afraid to die? But once that person is gone, guess what? There's no fear there. He's, there's, he's not worried about these things that's on earth. Read. Unto the man that hath nothing to vex him. Now this man that has nothing to vex him, meaning he has no problems. Whatever it was that, that he, he may have passed from or what ailed him, whether it had been sickness or whether it had been stress that he was going through, there's nothing to vex that man anymore, read. And that hath pros prosperity in all things. He has prosperity in all things. Why? Because he walked the path. There's nothing that this man can be touched with now. He did it. Come on. Yea, unto him that is yet able to receive meat. Come on. Oh, death. Acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy. Acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy, read. And unto him whose strength faileth. And unto him whose strength faileth. Acceptable is death unto the needy. Because sometimes, I'm going to tell you, life is hard for some. And I don't know if any of you all have ever watched a person who struggled, who literally every day they were dying from something. My mom passed from cancer. I watched my mom die for two years. And it was almost to the point around the end, she was ready. She was ready. She was tired. It says, O death, acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy, unto him whose strength faileth. Read. That is now in the last age. Uh -huh. And is vexed with all things. And is vexed with all things. Vexed with everyday life. It's a struggle. Pain. It's hurting. Listen, I don't know. I got arthritis in my shoulder. It sucks. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Your whole body. Every day. Come on. And to him that despaireth and hath lost patience. And have lost patience. It's like you wake up, you're like, I just can't do this. Mm. I'm tired. Come on. Fear not the sentence of death. Fear not the sentence of death. Read. Remember them that have been before thee. Read. And that come after. Remember the cycle. You're a part of this cycle. Remember them that have been before you and those that will come after you. Read. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. This is the this is that covenant we read earlier. This is what every man will experience. Every woman will experience. Death is a part of life. Come on. And why art thou against the pleasure of the Most High? When it says pleasure, I don't want y'all to get demented. It's talking about the Most High is the one that decreed it. 
So why are you against it? Come on. There is no inquisition in the grave. There's no questioning in the grave. Come on. Whether, no, oh, why, why, why? Ain't nothing of that going on. Read. Whether thou have lived ten or a hundred or a thousand or a thousand years. Whether you, nobody's questioning, well, I didn't get to do this. I didn't get to do that. For whether you, you only got ten years of life, a hundred years of life, or a thousand years. There's no questioning on when it was time. When the Most High decreed, that's when it was set. This is how long your life was going to be. Okay? We can't, sometimes we, we tend to think that, because we'll say, oh, gone too soon, too soon, too soon. Right. Which, to us, yes, because we love that person and we wanted to be around that person. All right? We wanted to spend more time with that person. A lot of times, it's like, we look back in retrospect like, dang, I wish I would have just kicked it with that brother more. I wish I would have been around that sister more. I wish that sister would have, or that brother would have, you know, came to my house, so I, I should have just been there more. I should have dropped the little stupid beef that I had with him, the little issue, not wanting to talk to him or him not talking. I wish I would have just squashed it. Dang, why you had to go like that? These things play on your mind, but at the end of the day, the most high God is the one that chooses when. He's the one that chooses is his time or is her time. Who are we to argue with the Lord? Mm. Give me Sirach, uh 20. Sirach 20, and we're going to start at verse 3. At the end of the day, make sure you're right with God. It's your job to make sure that you are on the right path and you're walking the walk and you, you ain't fake or phony. Sirach, Come on. Chapter 28 and verse 3. Come on. One man beareth hatred against another, and does he seek pardon from the Lord? Like I said, we, we sit up here, we have these little issues with one another, right? And we want... God to forgive us when we ain't even working out our issues amongst each other. We want the Lord to, di to, to deal with us. Say, we got problems with one another. We got problems with our brother and our sister and we won't fix it but we want the most high to pardon us for issues that we got. That he has with us because we ain't keeping the commandments. Come on. He showeth no mercy to a man which is like himself. You show no mercy to a man that's like yourself meaning what? He's in the same walk you are in. He's trying to get to the kingdom. But you won't show that man no mercy, your brother, Reed. And does he ask forgiveness of his own sins? But you turn to the Lord and ask forgiveness for the things that you've done. But you won't forgive your brother. Come on. If he that is but flesh nourish hatred, Come on. who will entreat for a pardon of his sins? Who's going to entreat for pardon of his sins? If you nourish hatred, meaning what? You won't let it go. You won't let it go. You just let that thing fester. You sit back and it's like you love being mad and upset at that person. You feeding it, literally. You're nourishing it. You're literally feeding that thing, that hatred. Mm. You're feeding it. You won't fix it. Read. Remember thy end. It says, if he that is but flesh nourish hatred, who will entreat for pardon for, of his sins? It says, remember thy end. Read. And let enmity cease. And what? Let enmity cease. And let enmity cease. Once this is why you got to make sure you check yourself. The fear of God should have your demeanor. Like I said, you saw about how it says, remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. It goes on to say, abstain from, abstain from strife and thou shalt diminish thy sins for a furious man will kindle strife. You know those people that always got that spirit about them like they just got issues. It's always a problem. They're always getting into it with somebody. They're always that person that's in the midst of something or something. There's always a problem, right? Give me Sirach 1 and verse 12. Watch the demeanor of somebody who fears God. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 12. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart. It does what? Maketh a merry heart. You notice that that's the demeanor? That's the type of... You ever look at a person like, Hey, man, I just love being around that brother, man. That brother's always in good spirits. That sister's always in good spirits, always happy, always cheerful. Read. And giveth joy and gladness and a long life. That's what the fear of the Lord is supposed to do for you. Come on. Whosoever feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last. It shall go well with that man or woman at the last. At the end of their life, it shall go well with them. Read. And he shall find favor in the day of his death. In the day of his death, guess what? The Lord's going to be there waiting for that man. Mm. That's what you want. That, that's the, at the end of the day, that's what we are all striving for, are we not? 
I don't know if y'all here just to kick it. I don't know. Hey, whatever. Y'all side just must be that guy. I want to hang out with y'all side after the Sabbath. Cool. I'm here for the kingdom. That's right. I'm trying to get That's to all I kingdom. see. All right. Drop that. Give me Sirach 15. Yeah, we're going to spend a little time in Sirach because Sirach really hey, did, touched on. Can I bring on, it out front real quick? On, yeah. Can you go back to uh, Wink at Ignorance? I just wanted to bring something out on that. <clears throat> it's Ecclesiastes chapter 28 and verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Bear no hatred. No hatred, right? That's what malice means, hatred. Come on. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. Wink at ignorance. Sometimes the brother you mad at, he don't even know. Now you you got that hatred. He he living on his life. He 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 sleeping at night. You you sitting there at night thinking about him. He didn't even know he offended you. He, he don't know even he know. Right. You got to pay attention to that. It say weak at ignorance. He don't even know what's going on. He scuffed my Jordans last last Sabbath. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> didn't call me. They didn't even know all this. You know what I'm saying? Like brothers right. are going through their own problems. People are going through their own issues. Right. All right. That's all I wanted to bring. All right. On. Drop that. Go to Sirach 15. Watch this. Sirach 15 and verse 11. This is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes, chapter 15, and verse 11. Read. Say not thou, it is though the Lord, it is through the Lord that I fell away. Read that again. Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. Like I said, did, did Job get weak and say, oh, it's God's fault. Right. God did this to me. No. Read on. For thou art not to do the things that he hateth. For you're not to do the things that God hates, read. Say not thou, he hath cursed me to err, uh -huh. for he hath no need of the sinful man. Come on. The Lord hateth all abomination, and they that fear God love it not. Come on. He himself made man from the beginning, and left him in the hand of his counsel. If thou wilt to keep the commandments, and to perform acceptable faithfulness, he hath set fire and water before thee. Y'all see how all these things is intertwined? Sirach is even touching on what? Ezra was touching on. There's fire and water before you, read. Stretch forth thine hand until whither thou wilt. Whither you wilt, stretch forth your hand. Come on. Before man is life and death. Come on. And, and whether him liketh shall be given him. And whatever it is that you like, some people like death. I'm going to tell you, they live their life. It's like, dang, you just, you don't want, you don't want to live. You don't want to get the kingdom. And that comes in many ways, shapes, and forms. Here's an example. Hey, bro. Hey, man, listen. Matter of fact, I'm going to use a real situation. I asked a brother that I've known for years, okay? I've known this brother, from Andrea's brother. I've known this man for years. I said, you know what? Come on, bro. Let's have a sit down. I see he's very influential over his, his siblings. I'm like, you know what? Let's sit down. Let's go through the scriptures, bro. I, want, I, I, I see you posting certain things. Okay, now you understand that, you know, uh, celebrations of Christmas and Easter and all that stuff is madness. Let's sit down. Let's go through the scriptures, bro. He says, all right, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. And all right, so when, when are we going to do that? Postpone, postpone, postpone. I'm like, dang. Hmm. Come on, bro. It's not that hard. All I'm going to do is give you the Bible. That's all it's going to be is the Bible. What they fear a lot of times is it, is, it has nothing to do with the fact that oh, uh, you're going to be right and I'm going to be wrong. The fact is, is that you're going to show me something that I've never seen in the Bible before and it's going to make me have to change the way that I live. That's the biggest struggle for people. I am afraid to sit down and have to read something that I've never seen before and find out the way I've been doing things was wrong. That's the biggest fear that people have. And listen, if, that, if that's the case, you're that person that's stuck on dying. Because there ain't nothing that you're going to show me in the Bible that's not going to make me say, oh, okay, well, got to do it. I don't care what it is. He could have said put fringes on your foreheads, brother. My fringes would have been dead on my forehead. I'd have been in this thing swinging like this long. <laughs> I can't even see. Most high in Christ bless you. You right where you at? Hey, we'd have both been in here like this. Oh, it's long. You said it, bro. I don't care. If it's saying, I'm going to do it. That's the type of demeanor that you have to have for the Lord. If it said it, I'm going to do it because God is worthy for me to do what he said. Period. Read on. Verse 18. For the wisdom of the Lord is great, and he is mighty in power and beholdeth all things. He sees all things. Come on. 
And his eyes are upon them that fear him, and he knoweth every work of man. Read on. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. Christ didn't come to give anybody license to sin. Christ came to show people how to keep God's commandments and walk the walk. Right. Christian, you're supposed to be walking after Christ. That's what I'm doing. Drop that. Give me, uh, what was that, 15 or 40? Give me 40. Sirach 40 and 1. Watch this. This right here, it's a battle. It's a battle. Ecclesiastes chapter 40 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Great travail is great for every man. Great travail is what? Great created for every man. Great travail is created for every man. We are going to experience all types of things in this life, all types of struggles, everybody. And I'm going to tell you all straight, your troubles, your struggles are mine. When you're going through something, I'm going through it too. Read on. And, and heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Did we not read that earlier? That heavy yoke is, things is different now. This, this is the path we have to walk, read. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb, to the day that they return to the mother of all things. The mother of all things is talking about what? The earth. To the day that you come out of your mother's womb, to the day you return to the earth. Dust shall you return to. Read. There are imaginations, imagination of things to come, and the day of death. It says their imagination of things to come, and the day of death. Read. Trouble their thoughts. Trouble their thoughts. This is why it's so heavy on you. Oh, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. That, that, that thought is put there for a reason. And it troubles men, read. It causes fear of heart. And causes fear of heart, read. From him that sitteth on a throne of glory. I'm talking about from the king, read. Unto him that is humbled in the earth and ashes. All the way down to the most humble or the most poor person. They all have this same fear. We all have this same fear, read. From him that weareth purple and a crown. Uh -huh. Unto him that is clothed with a linen uh, frock. Come on. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife. And in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep do change his knowledge. Do change his knowledge because all of these things weigh on you. Now, I will say this. A lot of times you be wondering, dang, what is these dreams? What is it that I'm dreaming? And a lot of it has to do with your fears. The things that you're fearing or the things that you're going through. A lot of that plays on your dreams, right? A, a little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep. Uh -huh. As in it says, a, a little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep. Read. As in a day of keeping watch, troubled in the vision of his heart, uh -huh. as if he were escaped out of a battle. As, as if he was escaped out of a battle, meaning what? That's how much it troubles him, the fear of death. Read. When all is safe, he awaketh. And marveleth that the fear was nothing. Uh huh. So a afterwards, he wakes up and is like, ah, man, I was tripping. I was bugging. Come on. Such things happen unto all flesh. This happens to everybody, read. Both man and beast. Uh huh. And that, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners. It says, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners. You understand what? One thing that I'm going to tell you about people that's in the world, even you, you'll remember you was in the world. You knew you wasn't right. You knew you wasn't right. You knew that it was questionable what was going to happen if you die. All that doubt. You know people that's on that stuff. Well, there's many truths in the back of their mind. Like, what if I pick the wrong one? <laughs> <laughs> that's Christianity right there. Mm -hmm. It ain't just Oprah. That's so-called Christianity because the true Christians is up in here. Is that right? That's right. We follow Christ. Listen, I had a man who I highly esteemed. I highly esteem this man. I, if anybody was, because my father has passed, but if anybody else is in line, it was this man right here. And the man told me, he said, there's, there's many ways to get to heaven. You know, you just got to be a good person, you know, and you'll get there. And in my mind, like I said, when I say I esteemed him, every word he said, I'm like, man, this guy, he, he knows everything. He's like everything he's ahead of. But when he said that, I said, this man is an idiot. He done lost his mind. He has no clue. Even I know you don't have, you telling me there's many ways, everybody, so everybody got their own way, huh? Mm. Everybody's just out here doing their own thing. So I can literally just make up my way right now and I'll be good. <laughs> nah, man. Nah. That, that right there, 
Like I said, the Lord is too important for me to sit around and not read and study and find him. All right, drop that. Give me Sirach 30. We almost done. Sirach the 30th chapter and uh, verse 14. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 and verse 14. Read. Better is the poor being sound and sound of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Certain times we don't realize um, people who deal and battle with sickness, okay, that it's heavy on them. It's heavy on their spirit. It weighs down on their everyday life. Scriptures let you know better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. It's better to be strong and healthy than to be rich. They, they, they really process that. He got all the nice clothes, cars. He got four Bentleys. He got Jaguars. He got all this stuff. He got a, a, a 2,000 inch TV. Right? But he can't get his big butt up and go use the bathroom on his own. Mm. What kind of life is that? It ain't life at all. Read on. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Or what? Above all gold. Above all gold is health. Read on. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Come on. There is no riches above a sound body. Read. And no joy above the joy of the heart. Read. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. Scriptures tell you that death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. So when you wonder why people sometimes be at the point where they're like, listen, I just I can't go on no more. I'm tired. You know, that, them is the people you need to be hitting with the scriptures, especially like, listen, yeah, you're right. And guess what? You're going to go see your maker. You better have to make sure that your stuff is together. Look, here's the scriptures. Let me show you something. That's, that's the more important time that, listen, you, as long as you got breath in you, you can repent. As long as you got breath in your body, you can repent and turn to the Lord. All right, drop that. Give me Sirach 22 and 11. Sirach 22 and 11. Let's see, let's see if we all believe. Ecclesiastes chapter 22 and verse 11. Watch this. Weep for the dead, uh -huh. for he hath lost the light. Let me ask a question. I ain't asked a question all, all class. It says, weep for the dead. What's this talking about? Very simple. It's not deep. I promise you. El Cana. It says, weep for the dead, for he hath lost the light. Uh, show sorrow. Right. So is it wrong for brothers or sisters to, to cry whenever someone passes? No. It happens. It happens, and we all, like I said, some of you brothers be here trying to front, look here, I'll say it first, but I love y'all, man. I don't want to see none of y'all leave. Sisters, too. I want to see nobody leave this earth, and it is what it is. And when I say I want to see you leave this earth, it's meaning I want to be around you. We enjoy one another. But all that is carnal. Understanding that, listen, the most high God is the judge. So when it's time, it's time. It says, weep for the dead, for he have lost the light. Go and on. weep for the fool. And weep for the fool. Read. For he wanteth understanding. For what? He wanteth understanding. He lacks understanding. I want y'all to understand something. The fool that lacketh understanding and dies. You understand? That's it. That's it for him. It's like, dang. Bro, you could have, I told you over and over. I gave you the scriptures. You didn't want to hear it. Now, look at you. Read on. Make little weeping for the dead, uh -huh. for he is at rest. It says make little weeping for the dead. So it's giving you a contrast that just like you weep for the dead, the fool needs to be wept for too because he lacks understanding because he going to really die. Y'all understand what I mean by that? Really die? It says for, uh, weep for the dead, for he's at rest. Read. But the life of the fool is worse than death. The life of a fool is worse than death. It's worse than dying. Come on. Seven days do men mourn for him that is dead. And that's normal. Seven days, especially for men, you mourn for that person that has passed away, read. But for a fool and an ungodly man all the days of his life. Come on. Talk not much with so a hold fool. On. But for a fool and an ungodly man all the days of his life, meaning what? All the days of his life. Why would you weep for him? Because he's not keeping the commandments. It's like, dang, dude, you just, 
dumb. He, just, mm. he don't even want, you don't want to do it. And that's depressing. It's like, man, you have no idea what the Lord has in store for you if you just repent and keep God's commandments. But you know what? At the end of the day, it is what it is. Seven days do men uh, mourn for that, that righteous brother that passed away. But you know why it's, it's not that long? Because the, go ahead. Because he's at rest, he's going to go to the kingdom. You we know, know he's all right. If you believe, if you believe, listen, you'll be sad for a little bit, but then you'll come to understanding God got him. The Lord got him. He's good. He's straight. All right, let me keep pressing because my day going to come. I'm, I, I'm messing around and be next, so let me get myself right. Drop that. Give me 1 Corinthians 10. Well, I want to let y'all know if y'all didn't know, <laughs> you're going to know it today. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, ain't nothing put in front of you that you cannot deal with. It happens. This is why you got to be spiritual. Don't be carnal. Don't deal with the flesh aspect. You got to deal spiritually and understand that's just the next, death is the next step that we all going to see. Death is the next step. Let's make sure, let's focus on the mission at hand right now. You got that? First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Come on. There has no temptation taking you but such as is com common to man. Uh -huh. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. All right. Like I said, it all boils down to nothing that you're going through. Somebody else has already been through it. Somebody else has already experienced it. Okay. So. God ain't going to put nothing in front of you that you can't bear and deal with. Regardless of what happened, you are able to make it through. You still have a choice whether or not you're going to make it through it. It's on you. But whatever it is, you can make it through. Real quick, I made a statement earlier. I want to just give a precept real quick so y'all know that I ain't crazy. Give me Sirach 38, verse 16. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38, verse 16. I spoke about meaning the person who passes away, you're not going to mourn for them all the days of your life if you have understanding. Verse 16. My son, let tears fall down over the dead. Come on. And begin to lament Read. as if thou had, had suffered great harm thyself. Come on. And then, and then cover his body according to the custom and neglect not his burial. Read. Weep bitterly. Do what? And weep bitterly. It's okay, brothers, to show emotion, to cry. It's all right. Come on. And make great moan and use lamentation as he is worthy. As he is worthy. Come on. And that a day or two, least thou be evil spoken of. Uh-huh. And then comfort thyself of thy heaviness. Why would you be evil spoken of? Same two hands. Why would you be evilly spoken of? Sure. Uh, it was uh, it was frowned upon amongst Israel if you uh, if you was like weeping over someone past a, past a certain amount of days. Why? Isaiah. Because it might show that you are uh, weak in the faith. Why would you? Why would it seem as though you're weak in faith? Because we know if you keep the commandments, then. You're going to get the kingdom. If not, you won't. So. Exactly. I want y'all to think about this. Here it is. Yes, you weep bitterly because you miss that person. You want that person, you know, to be there with you. But ultimately, you understand he's with the Lord. All right. He made it. If you know that this person kept the commandments, you're like, all right. All right. I got to do the same thing. I got I to gotta follow his footsteps. He kept the commandments and believed on Christ until he died. He did it. I need to do the same. So you keep it pushing, yeah. I had a cousin. His mom died when he was 11 of cancer, and I watched him grow up into his adulthood. He's older than me, and I watched him from a child to become an adult, and he's, he's nothing but a zombie. He died when his mom died, and he's just a body living on this earth, and that's how we get sometimes. We, that's why that scripture is saying that. You lost the faith because you let yourself die with that other person that died. We can't be like that. Ultimately, you got to look at it as God is the judge. So Lord decided to take him. 
all right, let me make sure I got my stuff together when the Most High decides it's my time. Then for the uh, person who ain't keeping the commandments, I'm going to tell you nine times out of ten, brothers that's in the faith, as long as you don't get weak, you understand, Most High took them, didn't keep the laws. It's, <laughs> it might be hard to even try to shed a tear because it's like, you've seen that man reject God. It's like, I tried talking to this person. I tried to bring the scriptures to this person. He didn't want to hear it. Right. Now his time was cut short. Am I going to weep and be, and, and be, and be sad? I, all right, watch this. We all watch, you know, them scary movies and stuff, right? Whenever they be having them daggone goblins and demons. Do anybody cry when the demon die? Oh, <laughs> look at the little devil. <laughs> Why they kill him? They only kill the little devil. Oh, no. No, everybody's like, that's what he get. Uh. That's what I'm serious. I was like, dang demon. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The most high God, he ordained you and created you. And you were set to keep his commandments, right? You are his chosen. Well, guess what? Satan got his people too. That person that, that person was trying to draw you out of the truth in your ear. You don't need to listen to them Israelites. Right. Them Israelites don't know what they're talking about. What you mean keep the commandments? No one can keep the commandments. Right. Nobody can do what Christ said. Mm -hmm. Are you serious, devil? And then the Lord takes him off the earth, and now he's not in your ear anymore. And you're like, oh, well, I'm going to keep pressing forward. Right. <laughs> I'm going to keep it pushing. He should have listened. Weep for the dead, but understand that the dead that die in Christ shall what? They shall rise again. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes. Hey, Deacon, that's why the scriptures say, weep bitterly and make great moan and use lamentation as he is worthy. worthy. That's right. Give me Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Understanding where we go when we pass. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, mm -hmm. and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You understand that? Because a lot of times we say, I just want to touch him. I just want to see him one more time. Look here. He ain't in there. No. He's not in there. That's that. Dust. So you believe? If you believe, you understand that he's with the Father. Go pray. You want to go touch the, that, that old vessel? He's not in there anymore. She's not in there anymore. You know, like I said, it's a carnal way of thinking when you, that's what I'm going to tell you. I'll be looking at some of y'all bugged out. I don't go to funerals in the world. It just makes no sense to me, especially with people that died in the world. I'm not going. You, I'm supposed to sit up here and listen to your lying pastor, lie, to, lie over your, your dead carcass some more before you, before they drop the carcass in the ground. Is that what I'm supposed to do with you? Mm. No. Some of y'all, like I said, huh? Right. Get up there and be all types of lying and just like, man, whatever. Right. All right. Drop that. Give me uh, First Thessalonians 4. I'm going to wrap it up. Two more scriptures. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. Hmm. Like I said, shalom. <laughs> Listen, I'm be honest. Like I said, I understand. My, my great, only, I went to two funerals. I went to my mom's funeral and then my father's funeral, right? I told myself, I ain't fooling with this stuff again. I went to another funeral years and years later, but it was because I went with Bishop, and he was, you know, directing it, whatever the case is. But after that, I looked at him like, I'm not doing funerals. It makes no sense. Now I ain't talking about if one of us pass away. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about people in the world. Hell no. I'm not doing it. This, you just basically, it's your last jab at me to get me to go to church before you before they drop your body in the ground. <laughs> no, I ain't going. Gotcha. You in here, white Jesus on the wall. You in the thing Cross like. Over the... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> First Thessalonians 4 and 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, mm -hmm. concerning them that which are asleep. Concerning them that are asleep. What is that? I would not to have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not. Even as others which have no hope. Come on. For if we believe. It says that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Meaning what? You need to rejoice. That, that brother or sister that died in Christ did just that. They died in Christ. Rejoice. 
Read on. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. God's going to bring with him. Come on. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Mm -hmm. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout and with, a, with the voice of, an, of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Read that again. The dead in Christ shall rise first. They're going to rise first. That's good news. Listen, yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna see that person again. Lord's will, if you if you press forward and keep on down uh, the right path. Come on. Then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them you're in the You're gonna be clouds. caught up together with them. In the clouds. So it's not over. We're going to see our brothers and sisters again who have walked this walk in Christ and have died in Christ, who are asleep in Christ. We'll meet them again. Go on. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh -huh. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to be reminded that those that we love, that keep God's commandments and faith in his son, we'll see them again. We'll be reunited. We all going to kick it. If we continue down, like I said, I ain't talking like I already made it. Don't get it twisted. I'm trying to get there too. Right. But if we all keep pressing forward and keep these commandments of faith in Christ, we will see our family again, all those that we've lost in the truth. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Come on. Behold, I show you a mystery. I'll show you a mystery. This is hidden. Come on. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Read. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We just read that again. The dead's going to be raised incorruptible, meaning what? They ain't going to die no more. Come on. And we shall be changed. Read on. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Come on. And this mortal must put on immortality. For this corruption must put on incorruption. It says, and this mortal must put on immortality, meaning what? Live forever. Read on. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, mm -hmm. death is swallowed is you up. Okay, yeah, you died, but I'm back. <laughs> I'm back, baby. Right. I'm here. Death didn't win. You know how death could beat you? Watch this. Read on. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Where, how is, okay, put it this way. How could death beat you? Brother, right here. Big Ari. Microphone. <laughs> oh. uh, by not following your laws and commandments. By what? By not following your laws and commandments. By not following the laws and commandments. That brother, like my son. No, they're all grown up. Hey, same hair. I'm watching hair you, brother. I'm watching you, brother. Listen, <laughs> it says that's, and he's absolutely right. See, he in the spirit. Listen, death wins. If you die in your sins. I'm spitting right now. Yeah, you're spitting. No. Death wins if you die in your sins. I might write that down a little later. <laughs> that is a t-shirt. That's how the victory is gotten. But whenever you die and you in Christ, where's your sting? Where's your sting at? It's like you get hit in the face. You're supposed to get knocked out. Bow! And you looking at him like, what? So what? That's it? That was it? I'm back, baby. <laughs> I'm back. Now you got to deal with me. Uh. It says, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Read. The sting of death is sin. That's the sting. The sting of death is sin is if you died in the midst of your sin and you didn't repent or change. Come on. And the strength of sin is the law. And the strength of sin is the law because you break the commandments. Guess what? That's how sin has power over you. Remember how we read it back in, uh, what was that, in Genesis? Well, we didn't read that today. I'm sorry. But it says, and get that real quick, Genesis. I, I know I lied. Yeah, I lied. I'm sorry. What is that, Genesis 4? Genesis uh, 4, yeah. Read that real seven. quick. The book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh-huh. If thou doest well, 
shalt thou not be accepted? Read this. So this is the Lord speaking to who? Cain. He says, listen, if you do well, will you not be accepted? Will you not be um, uh, approved? Read. And if thou doest not well, uh -huh. sin lieth at the door. Sin lies at the door. Read. And unto thee shall be his desire. And unto thee shall be his desire. So guess what? Sin, which is given basically like a human characteristic, which is Satan, shall rule over you. Sin is going to rule over you and control you. How can sin control you? Meaning you do what Satan wants you to do, right? Now nah, be controlled by God. Be accepted of the Most High God and do what he said to do. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. Uh -huh. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Come on. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. We obtain the victory through our Lord Jesus to Christ who came and died. Now all our sins are wiped away. What the old covenant couldn't do, Christ did it. And now whenever we pass away, all our sins are forgiven. Everything is blotted out. Most high won't, forget, uh, won't remember those sins. Read on. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Uh-huh. Unmovable. Unmovable. Meaning what? You're not going to get moved off the path. You're steadfast. You got your eyes locked on the kingdom. Your eyes are locked on that great city. Read. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Doing what? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's your focus. Always abounding in the work of the Most High God. Come on. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain your in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So guess what? Set your eyes on the prize. Set your eyes on the kingdom of heaven and put in the work. We all trying to get to the kingdom, are we not? Scripture says the kingdom ain't going to come by what? Observation. We ain't going to watch it. It ain't just going to fall out the sky into our laps and we just going to walk through them pearly gates. No. We got to get up. We got to labor. Shalom, this is I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.